Bruce Wayne was one of the richest men in Gotham City. He lived in Wayne Manor, above a secret cave, the Batcave. That's because Bruce was also Batman. Every evening, Batman carefully checked his crime-fighting tools and equipment. Then he would go out on patrol. In Gotham City, all was quiet when suddenly, an alarm went off. Two-Face and his gang were robbing Gotham City's first national bank. Two-Face cut the bank safe into two pieces with a big laser. Then, he told Lefty and Righty to go inside and take half of the money. Why not take all of it, boss? I have my reasons. Not as I say or you'll get on my bad side. Lefty knew better than to argue with Two-Face. Lefty and Righty took half of the money from the bank vault. They carried it outside, put it into Two-Face's getaway car, and drove away. Once, Two-Face had been a lawyer named Harvey Dent. He had been Batman's friend. Together, they had sent many criminals to jail. But then, an accident left Harvey with bad scars on half of his face. Harvey became a criminal, and called himself Two-Face. He was obsessed with anything that had two sides, anything that was a pair, and anything that has the number two. Batman was in the Batcave when all of a sudden, he got a call from Police Commissioner Gordon. Batman! Two-Face and his men are robbing the First National Bank! Get over there, quick! I'm on it. With the flick of a switch, he turned on the Batmobile's booster rockets and took off. In the getaway car, Two-Face had a smile on his face. He tossed a silver coin in the air. Good work, boys! <laughs> Just then, the Batmobile came speeding around the corner. Two-Face and his men drove as fast as they could. Batman's right behind us. Unless we stop the Batmobile, we'll never get away. Quiet! I have to make a decision. The Batmobile was closing in fast. We can throw the money out to distract Batman so we can get away. Or we can give ourselves up because the Batmobile will catch us. No, we can't get caught. I'm not going back to jail. Whenever Two-Face had a choice to make, he would flip a special coin. One side of the coin was normal. The other side was scratched. If the scratched side came up, Two-Face would choose to do something bad. The choice is ours. It's up to the coin. Two-Face tossed the coin into the air and caught it in his palm. It landed with the scratched side face up. Throw the money out the window! But boss, we just stole it! Do it! The Batman will never catch us. People stood on the sidewalks of Gotham City. They watched as the Batmobile chased Two-Face's car through the streets. Suddenly, thousands of dollars flew out the windows of Two-Face's speeding car. People ran into the street to grab the falling money. Batman had no choice. He slammed on the brakes to avoid hitting the people. And Two-Face got away. Later, Commissioner Gordon and Batman stood outside of the First National Bank. This just isn't Two-Face's style. Why wouldn't he rob the second national bank? It has the number two in its name. Two-Face is up to something, Commissioner. I'm just not sure what it is yet. The first national bank robbery was just the beginning. Night after night, Two-Face and his gang committed more crimes all around Gotham City. They cut statues in half with a handheld laser. Then, they stole only the left halves. They also broke into the Gotham City Museum and stole halves of the world-famous paintings. Even Batman was confused. These halfway crimes made no sense at all. 
That night, Batman was flying in his bat plane. He saw the bat signal in the sky. But only half of it was lit up. He landed on the roof of police headquarters. There, Commissioner Gordon was waiting for him. Don't tell me Two-Face took part of the bat signal too. That's not the half of it. He showed Batman pictures of the latest crimes. Last night, Two-Face had stolen half of the George Washington statue in front of City Hall. Why would Two-Face steal half of his statue of the first president? Why not John Adams, the second president? Or even Thomas Jefferson, the president on the $2 bill. Slicing the statue in half makes it worthless. Maybe. Or maybe that's what he wants us to think. Do you still have the other half of the statue? Yes. It's in our evidence room. Why? I'd like to look at it. I think I may know what Two-Face is up to. Down in the Batcave, Batman studied the half-statue on his giant Batcomputer. Alfred walked in, carrying a tray with tea and sandwiches. Master Bruce, did you buy that at a half-off sale? Very funny, Alfred. The statue is actually worth nothing. I should think so. Half of it is missing. Actually, it was worth nothing before it was cut in half. It's a fake. But why would anyone cut a fake statue in half? If everyone, especially the police, believe the original statue has been destroyed, no one would go looking for it. Robbing the bank and stealing half of the money was a clue. But I didn't see it until now. Two faces committing half crimes. He steals priceless works of art and then replaces them with right copies. That way, he could have the world's greatest art collection and the police would never know. That's very clever. And he almost got away with it. He still might, unless I let him steal the Wayne family Ming vase. Master Bruce, that vase is one of the most valuable pieces in your collection. Don't worry, Alfred. I promise to bring it back. In one piece. The next day, the newspaper ran a story that Bruce Wayne's priceless Ming vase was on display at the Gotham City Museum. That night, Two-Face and his men broke into the museum, stole the vase, replaced it with a half-wrecked fake, and sped away in their car. Two-Face's car slowed to a stop at an abandoned factory. The sign on the building read, Two Coats Paint Company. The two henchmen went inside. On the roof of the building stood a dark figure in a cape. Batman. He peered through a skylight. Inside, the large room was split down the middle into two halves. On one side, were valuable works of art. On the other side were identical copies. Two-Face set the vase down on one side of the room. I can't believe Batman hasn't figured it out. <laughs> he thinks I'm stealing halves. He doesn't know. I'm actually making doubles. <laughs> but boss, if everyone thinks all these things have been destroyed, how are we gonna sell the originals? It's easy. We'll offer them to private collectors. Since I'll know these pieces are stolen, they won't show them to anyone. Then, when they realize we've sold them fakes, they can't tell the police. We're going to sell fakes? Yes! We can sell double of these works of art forever! We'll make a fortune. And we'll be surrounded by the world's most valuable pieces of art. No, you won't. The only thing you'll be surrounded by are prison bars. Batman! How did you find us? It's a bat tracer I put on Bruce Wayne's vase. Uh, it doesn't matter! You're outnumbered by my men. Two to one! And you wouldn't dare fight us in here. Look around you. One side of the room is filled with priceless works of art, and the other side is fakes. You don't know which is which. But I do know Two-Face. My bat tracer tells me exactly which side is right. And you're on the wrong side. Lefty, righty, get him! Batman leapt at the two henchmen. 
Batman pushed them into paintings and smashed vases over them. At last, he tied up Lefty and Righty. Meanwhile, Two-Face knew he had to get away. He started to run, but then he tripped over a painting. His laser fell out of his pocket and slid across the floor, all the way to Batman. Oh no! Do I get my laser back? I might get caught. Or do I escape? I have to make up my mind! He pulled out his coin and tossed it high in the air. Too late, Two-Face. I've made up your mind for you. And he grabbed Two-Face's laser. He aimed it at the spinning coin. With a hiss, the beam sliced the coin in half in mid-air. Then, the two halves hit the ground. One half of the coin landed good side up. The other half of the coin landed bad side up. Two-Face didn't know which decision to make. As Two-Face stood there, Batman came up and snapped bat cuffs on him. Then he called Commissioner Gordon on the radio in his utility belt. This isn't fair. My plan should have worked. It wasn't half bad. No, Two-Face. Any crime you think of is all bad.